the mighty ship perched upon the pillar of rock. Greetings and welcome to Stranded Deep Experimental as we continue to look at the latest 0.05.E3 Experimental build which last time around we took a look at the map editor in which we built the wonderful island of wizarding wondrous stuff or whatever it is we called it I forget I'm sure it'll be there when we come to uh, place it in the new world editor which is distinct from the map editor um, and then we can take a look at it in game before we do that very quickly we're just going to go into the options we're going to select input and we're going to reset our controls to default now you need to do this because they have messed around with the controls a little bit they've added a new crafting menu which apparently can conflict with the crouching so uh, it's just something you need to do something else that I found when I did this previously is that the pause escape key didn't work anymore so if you just rebind that manually after resetting it to default that seems to work I mean it's useful to be able to open up the escape menu in game because that's how you you know save and quit and things like that anyway let's go into my game which opens up the new world editor which is distinct from the map editor in the map editor, we created an individual island or cell. In the world editor, we stitch those individual islands together to form our world. And you can actually create just a random world as you always could before. So we just create a new random world here. As you can see, it's just got randomly generated terrain. We've got this like little randomly generated islands. And we've also got these randomly generated sea terrain tiles. So we've got some of them which don't have any islands in, but they clearly have different depths. And I think the way this works is they're just cells like any other, okay? So we can like take one of our existing cells here, the Wizarding Island of Wonderful Stuff, and we can just drop it basically anywhere we want to occupy one of these cells. We'll put it just to the west here. And that now will be there in the world when we load it up. We'll start in this central region, the red region or the orangey red region. Um, I think it's probably orangey red because we can't change it because that's where we are. Even though the world's just been created, that's where the player has been placed. And so uh, it is unchangeable. All of the other regions, as I understand it, can be changed at any time. So even mid-game, you can load up the, the world editor and you can replace an island, as long as you're not on that island at the time, or a cell. I mean, it doesn't have to be an island. So you can continually update your world as time goes on without having to restart your save all the time, which is a really nice feature. I hope that this doesn't mean that they've given up on the idea of the infinite worlds, or at least the very large worlds, and that they're just sort of hoping that this sort of dynamic, changeable world is enough. Um, personally, I'd like to see both. I think this is a great feature, but we certainly could do with larger worlds as well. Um, and of course, all of this is community integrated, or it will be community integrated. I imagine you'll be able to download all this stuff off of the Steam Workshop um, and share your creations and play other people's creations, either their individual map cells that you can just drag and drop into your own world, and hopefully people will create whole sort of coherent worlds that hang together and have perhaps like a, a story and some lore and some, some like you know, interesting stuff. Um, let's just top the Beamland Island down so we've got something else to explore if we get around to it. Save changes, and then we will dive in and we will see what it's actually like in-game. And here we are in-game in our familiar old yellow life raft. Let's grab the paddle. Uh, that there in the south is that the south? I'm not sure if that's the south. It looks like an interesting island. It probably is the Beamland Island. Of course, it's midday, so the sun is just above us. It's just, it's no help whatsoever. I'm going to assume that that is the Beamland Island, right, over there. Um, so that means that's in the south. So the wonderful Wizarding Island must be to the west. And so looking from Beam Team to our starting island, it's, it's in this direction, isn't it? It's clearly over in this direction. Roman Row. Uh, we can't see it yet. It looks like there's like a little island in the distance there. Somehow I suspect our island is actually much larger and more impressive than that. And we will get a pretty, a pretty substantial pop in as we start to get a little bit closer. This is definitely going to be something that they're going to need to address and find a resolution for. The, the people are going to want to build large islands. If you're going to let people build islands, they're going to want to build large islands. And uh, and pop-in is going to be a, a bit of a factor. So we need a better load system for the nearby islands so that we don't get like a really horrendous pop-in when, uh, when the island loads. Which is no doubt going to be fairly soon because it's quite a nearby island, isn't it? I mean, it's literally just one cell over. I'm still absolutely in love with these oceans, though. I mean, I just love the wave dynamics. They're just fantastic. And with the the tides coming and going as well, and it, it feels like there is so much more they can do with this. When they get the weather implemented, we could have, like, big storm surges and stuff. 
swamping low-lying areas of islands that of course makes larger islands that much more interesting as well and like player crafted islands you could have like low-lying flat bits that are really tempting to build your buildings on but then a big storm surge comes in and all of a sudden everything's underwater and, ah it would be amazing it would be fantastic oh there it is there's the poppin uh there's the wonderful wizarding island of wonderful stuff as well and in all of its glory, it's pretty impressive. You can see the outer marker stones that we placed just to mark the edge of the cell. So that gives you an idea of the scale in-game of how big each cell is. It's pretty big. I mean, it's pretty big. You could definitely build a fairly substantial island inside it, especially if you pushed it, you know, fairly close to the border in all directions. Height-wise, it's actually not as tall as I thought it was going to be when I was editing it. Look, it looks kind of... Um, well, I mean, a lot bigger than, than any of the randomly generated islands, for sure, but it could certainly stand to be a bit taller than that. I'd like to see some properly tall cliffs and and sort of like, you know, highland central regions, maybe even kind of like a little mini volcano or something. I mean, I might be getting a little bit um, a little bit overexcited now and, over and excitable, although, you know, what is a desert island without a volcano in the middle? That's what I want to know. And we are about to make landfall for the very first time on the Wizarding Island of wonderful stuff. And full of wonderful stuff it is too, look. Um, the actual ground has got some ground scatter on it. This wasn't obvious from inside the editor. Maybe if we zoomed in closer to the ground we would have seen this. Um, but it's good to see. I don't see any stones or anything. And I don't have any stones in my inventory that might, that might limit our crafting options. Um, I mean, I've got the knife at least, so I guess we can sort of chop up some stuff with this. There's the wreck. There's like our little lagoon area here. Look, our our lovely lagoon. Does it have Damien the shark in it somewhere? It's, it's certainly got the old World War II mine look. Uh, floating kind of um, just more or less out of the water, which uh, is not ideal, is it? Should we have a little swim around the lagoon and see if we can find Damien? Okay, well, if he is around, he doesn't seem to want to come out and play right now. Uh, that could be because it's quite a shallow... Bay. It's quite a shallow lagoon and it may be that the spawning engine won't spawn in uh, the sea creatures if there is not enough depth to the sea or it could be that it actually detected it was fully enclosed. I'm not sure. It will take more experimentation in the future. But now let's just explore the rest of the island and the wonders that we create. Look, there's the, there's the UFO just embedded in the side of the hill. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, considering how quickly this island was, was thrown together, the land is a little bit sharp in places i obviously could have smoothed this out a bit more it looks a little bit unrealistic the way it kind of like just just rises and falls so sharply uh, and at such angles you can see the the angular nature of the terrain in places but that's fine look there it is there's the ufo uh, crashed who knows if that's a spoiler let's not investigate it too closely just in case it's um yeah we'll just ignore it up to the top of the hill, here, up as high as we can go. Much higher than I have ever stood in Stranded Deep before. Look, the ocean looks pretty good. The distant islands possibly need to fade a little bit. But generally speaking, the engine handles the extra height, the obviously unintended height, very well. Look, let's, let's climb the ridge all the way up to the quad pod. And, of course, the mighty ship perched upon the Pillar of Rock, which I, uh, I've i handily added this little um, this little walkway so that we can walk up onto it. Because, you know, clearly, clearly you're going to want to get up on it, aren't you? Uh, why else would we have it up here on this little rock pillar? That's what I want to know. Um, here we are. Look. I mean, look. Look at this. It's fantastic. It's like a little lookout post. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're really up high. Um, I even feel slightly, um, slightly nervous at being up so high above the ground, uh, teetering. I don't... Oh, no, hold on, we're through. I thought I was stuck then, but actually we have managed to get through. The game does seem to be a little bit sensitive to these sort of oddly rotated objects. I, I seem to get stuck quite a lot and I have to jump in order to make any progress. Uh, hopefully that's something that can be worked on and, and tweaked, but it'll also probably just be a fact of making levels and making maps and things that you'll need to make sure you thoroughly playtest them and, and make sure that all of your sort of orientations are tuned to uh, provide the best experience. Speaking of best experience, look at that view. This is just fantastic. Look, it's absolutely beautiful. It really is amazing. I've never seen this game from this from this angle before, um, from this from this sort of point of view. It's brilliant. Um, all right, let's go and explore this tower thing. We have to do a little bit of jumping and a little bit of ducking. And um, hold on. Uh, uh, oh no, I'm stuck. I think I'm stuck. Can I? Can I chop my? Oh look, we've got an echo as well. Uh, we've got an echo because we've entered the uh, the spooky old sea fort thing. 
I'm, I'm well and truly stuck here, though. What was I just saying about having to playtest your maps? And uh, make sure that you, you don't have any um, odd little glitches and things? Well, yeah, this is definitely going to be part of that as well. If you're going to make funky places to walk around and things, you need to make sure that people can't get themselves stuck. Because this is not a game you want to get stuck in. It really isn't. Because uh, there's no respawn mechanic, is there? Basically, the only thing I can do now is exit without saving. And, uh, and come back in and uh, start again from the beginning and roll all the way out here. Okay, well, uh, I'll do that uh, and I'll see you in a second. All right, we're back. We're back on the island after having uh, had to swim back, basically, because we had to start a new game because we got stuck up there on our fantastic um, quad pod tower thing. So we're not going to go back up there because clearly it's far too dangerous to do so. Instead, let's check out some of the other things that we dumped around this island. Uh, and see how they are. So over here we've got some of the pods and stuff. Look how rough the terrain is. I think, as I was saying, you really need to be careful to sort of smooth your terrain to make it realistic and believable, unless it's going to get sort of rock textured, I suppose. Um, looks like things like the cabinets don't physics. They just float wherever you put them. So let's um, let's open this. Can we? Can we open this? There we go. Open that. There we go. We can open this. It looks like it does randomly spawn contents for these chests. So you just have to worry about placing the chests uh, or the items and then they will randomly have different stuff in them. It would be nice if we could perhaps get two versions or maybe a toggle flag that allows us to choose whether it has random contents or whether it has pre-designed content. That's something that I would definitely like to see if I was going to be building things like adventure maps or, or sort of custom scenarios and things like that. There's a sign. Looks like the sign is actually physics, is it? Yeah, look, the sign is physics, as is Wally. Hello, Wally slash Wilson. Right, up, up in the air, up, up and away. Uh, he really does fly, doesn't he? He flies fantastically well. Mysterious package, also physics. Nice, that's what I like to see. Kind of would have liked an axe, actually, uh, in amongst all of this stuff somewhere. That would have been really nice. That would have been really handy. Got an axe in here? No, you just got a flashlight. Uh, all right, and the cabinet. Oh, yeah, the cabinet's broken, isn't it? Cabinet's broken and it freezes up uh, your controls until you press escape and come back. <laughs> there we go. Um, little tip for you there. Little tip. Don't use the cabinets. Uh, or if you do, maybe it's because it's floating like that in uh, in a freakish manner. Um, all right, fine. Well, let's bring up the crafting menu. And we'll take a look at this. This is the new crafting menu. So gone is the old kind of um, crafting pile of doom that you would sort of t highlight and then click on. And then depending on what was possible to be crafted within that pile, you get different context sensitive options. I actually kind of like that crafting system, I have to say. So we'll see if this is actually better. It certainly looks quite nice. You've got this kind of like, you know, like bits of very clean, very nicely folded paper for someone who's survived a, a plane crash and is now surviving on a desert island, I have to say. Uh, but okay, fine. Survival at sea. Crafting. If you are surviving with minimal equipment after a disaster, you will need some tools with which to build a shelter and cut firewood. In the wilderness, broken or lost tools cannot be replaced, so you must take great care of them. Always work within the limitation of your tools and as well as within your own capabilities. Um, so here we go. Basically, you can click on what you want to craft. So, for example, the axe. A crude, useful cutting... Sorry, a crude cutting tool with poor durability. Useful for chopping trees. It tells you what materials you need and the materials that you have. So we need a rock, we need a lashing, and we need a stick. We have none of these things. In fact, we'll have none of these things for basically all of this stuff. But it does show you at least this way you know what you can craft, I guess. Which was sort of a problem with the old system, is that you didn't really know what you could craft. You just kind of like built a big pile of stuff and then saw what it presented to you as an option. Um, so that's crafting. Then we've got building, foundations, panels, walls, floors and steps. This I think is still the um, dubious first implementation of the new building system that we played around with at the end of the experimental mini playthrough of the uh, experimental version 2. Uh, what else do we have here? Look, farming coming soon, only unlocked with a hoe, similar to building. This would be really good. It'd be really nice to have the ability to build up your base and your food supply and stuff a little bit more. And medical. Something really interesting about medical coming soon. We'll be able to craft bandages, splints, salves, herbal remedies, etc. So it looks like there should be a lot happening in the crafting side of the game very soon, which is great to see. Crafting is obviously a key part of the gameplay mechanics for this kind of survival game. I'd also like to see them flesh out some of the actual survival challenges of the game, which can then be solved or at least mitigated through the use of these expanded crafting options, which 
will be fantastic when it happens. But of course, that will be in the future. It's not part of this update. Um, so let's forget about it for now and go and craft something that we can craft, like a campfire, perhaps. Aha! Driftwood pile! This will give us some sticks. There we go! That should give us plenty of sticks for the crafting of a campfire. Um, now, when you craft, you can draw resources from your inventory or from the area immediately around you. If I just open up... Oh, it, I need to sort of look up a bit. You can see there's this sort of orange highlighted area around me, and that is the area that crafting resources will be drawn in from when you're attempting to build something. So. Um, you can either have things in your inventory or you can have them on the ground. There we go. We see we've got four of uh, eight available. It'll take four and we've got eight available. Four are on the ground and four are in our inventory. So let's craft it. There it is. Um, we'll pop it down somewhere. Hopefully it won't float. No, look, it's all good. Look, just as the sun sets, we shall light ourselves a campfire here upon the island. Um, and the four sticks actually came from the ground, look. We've still got the four sticks in our inventory, so it preferentially takes resources from the ground, it seems, from that admittedly rather brief... Oh, look at that, that's just so fantastic. It's just awesome. It's, it's, I mean, every island should have a shipwreck on a pillar of rock, uh, possibly with some kind of quad pod lookout post type thing, um, just for general epicness. Is, is that not amazing? I think it's pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, I don't think the crafting pile of doom is going to be entirely gone because obviously you're still only going to have a limited amount of space in your inventory um, and you're still going to want to pile up most of your stuff where you want to actually make things. Um, although I suppose you can segregate things into more discrete piles possibly a little bit more easily than you could before because everything doesn't need to be kind of connected in the web like it was last time. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how that develops. I had no real issue with the old crafting system, but the new crafting system seems nice as well. And uh, all of the other features are coming along brilliantly. And the whole map editing idea is fantastic. Any any time you add modding tools and modding capability to a game, it is always going to make that game better. It's always going to give you uh, a better experience because it allows people to create the type of content they want for that game. And that's just fantastic. And I really, really hope the developers get behind that and stay behind that and really give us the tools uh, and the, the resources in-game to be able to, to, to branch out and to tell stories and to do different types of levels and maps and things like that. But of course that is all for the future and for now I think we have seen pretty much everything there is to see in the experimental E3 version, at least in terms of its core feature set. There is some other stuff that I'd like to do with this with this version of the game. Um, I'm definitely going to have an experiment with multi-cell islands, multi-map islands, if you will, seeing if we can stitch those together effectively and create really big, really interesting terrains. Um, and there's some other stuff also experimenting with underwater terrain. There's lots of things to do with the editor um, that I will probably experiment with myself and I will make some future videos on uh, but until then thanks a lot for watching everybody I have been Weird Wizard and I will see you later there we go look we've got, we've got a little platform <laughs> hey I, I am Spear Fisherman oh fantastic right good Rex to dive around oh look I see that as I say that I suddenly spy not just one but two, out of nowhere.